This is the Garrett Ace 400i, which is ideally suited for finding international coins, jewelry, and artifacts. The Ace 400i includes iron audio to help identify discriminated iron targets, digital target ID with a large 0 to 99 scale for more target information, a 10 kilohertz frequency for improved sensitivity on low and medium conductivity targets like gold and lead, an adjustable frequency to help eliminate electrical interference or other detectors in competition hunts, cam locks for increased stem stability, and a sharp, responsive pulse width modulation audio. The ACE 400i includes three free accessories. Garrett volume control headphones, an environmental cover-up to protect the control box from rain, dust, and mud, and a coil cover to protect your search coil from scratches and chips during use. Assembly of your new ACE detector is very simple. Loosen the lower cam lock and extend the lower stem. Insert the mounting washers Connect the search coil to the stem and hand tighten the wing nut. Loosen the upper cam lock. Insert the S stem with the control housing. Adjust the lower stem to a comfortable height and hand tighten the cam locks. Wrap the coil cable snugly around the stem with the first turn over the stem. Insert the coil connector into the control housing connector and hand tighten. The arm cuff can be adjusted by removing the screw on the bottom and mounting the two-piece cuff to the other hole. To power on the detector, simply press the power button. To power off, press the power button and hold for about one second until you hear that second beep. To restore your detector to factory settings, simply press and hold the power button for about five seconds. When you hear that double beep, you'll also notice that it's switched to coins mode, which is the factory default setting. The ACE 400i also includes this battery level indicator. When it's down to one bar remaining, it's time to change your batteries. Your ACE 400i is always going to indicate all targets that you encounter in the field, but it's important that you understand target ID. So let's take a look at that. The ACE 400i's target ID includes this legend up at the top. Ferrous or iron items are going to indicate more toward the left side. Non-ferrous or more conductive items are going to indicate more toward the right. This lower scale here indicates that all pixels are active. They are all switched on. Nothing has been rejected. So I've got a couple targets on the ground here. Just to show you that you're always going to get a cursor at the top when you encounter metal in the field, it's always going to indicate it. If it's something that's been discriminated, like this, you won't get audio, but you'll still get that pixel at the top and a digital target ID number that corresponds at the bottom. If it's something that's accepted, you're also going to get the audio along with the pixel at the top and the digital target ID number at the bottom that corresponds with it. The number at the bottom gives you a more precise reading of what's showing at the top. And to the right, you've got a coin depth indicator given in five centimeter increments. So in this case, I'm about 10 centimeters above my target, which would be about how deep it was buried in the ground if it was a buried target. So cursor at the top, depth indicator, and a more precise digital target ID, all available on the ACE 400i. Be aware that items much larger than a coin may actually be deeper than what they indicate. And items that are very small, very much tinier than the coin, may actually be sitting shallower than what they indicate. For the very best target ID, you want to keep very level swings of your coil 
and you want to get your coil centered directly over the target as best you can for the most accurate digital target ID number. The ACE400i has three distinctive tones based on the type of metal that you encounter and its conductivity. So I have three targets on the ground. Let's go over them and let's listen to these three different tones. Okay, the low tone on the ACE400i is anything with a digital target ID reading between 0 and 39. First, I've got this iron nail here. You hear it grunting. Low numbers bouncing around. That's your low tone. Next, I'm going to move over here to a piece of foil. And mid-tone is going to be anything between 40 and 59 on your digital target ID. That was your mid-tone. Now let's go to the high tone. That's anything that reads above 60 on your digital target ID. That's your high or bell tone on the 60 plus items. One of the powerful features included on this ACE400i is iron audio. Now what that does is it helps you avoid digging tricky items like washers and bottle caps, flat items that might sound good to a detector, but they really contain iron. So the use of iron audio can help you pick that out. I've got a bottle cap here that's a nemesis of a lot of coin diggers. I'm going to put this on the ground and let's go over it and I'll kind of explain the iron audio feature to you. Okay, this is your iron audio button right here, the same as the power button. It's important to note that you must have some discrimination put in. You must have notched out some iron for iron audio to be functional. So what I'm going to do, uh, here's a bottle cap I've already showed you, I put it down. When I go over it, it sounds pretty good. In order for it to function, I need to discriminate out some iron, so I'm just going to just jump right down here to jewelry mode, and that knocks out some of my iron. Let's go over that bottle cap again. Still sounds like a pretty good target, but let's check it for iron grunts by putting our iron audio on and go back over it again. If you notice there at the ends of the swing, as I pass the target by, there's some grunts on either side of the target. Above it, it sounds pretty good, but coming and going, there's enough grunts going on that I know that target contains some iron, therefore I know it's not a good pure coin. So that's the value of using the Iron Audio to check some of your targets. Now let's take a look at the different discrimination patterns and other features of the ACE400i. Use the mode plus or minus buttons to select between four preset discrim patterns or create your own custom pattern. In zero disk, nothing is notched. All 12 pixels are active. Use this mode when a target signal is inconsistent or when you don't know exactly what type of metal you're looking for. Jewelry ignores most iron trash, but finds rings, watches, bracelets, and other types of jewelry. In custom, you can create your own discrimination pattern, eliminate anything you want to, and when you turn the detector off and back on again, it will remember that custom pattern that you created. Relics mode eliminates most small iron, but keeps lead, brass, bronze, and other lower conductors in play. Coins is designed to find all coins and eliminate common trash like foil, iron, and pull tabs. Be aware that some small jewelry could be missed with this pattern. Using notch discrimination, there's two ways to get rid of a trash target. To demonstrate this, I've thrown down a pull tab on the ground. So let's go over it and see what it reads. I notice where it reads, and what I can do is use these two buttons here, the plus and minus, move it over to where that spot was, hit the alim button to get rid of it, and now let's go back over the target. It's silent. I see the cursor, but I don't hear that target, therefore I won't dig it. If I want to bring it back into play, I just hit the alim button again. Now that item has been accepted again. The other way to get rid of a trash target is when you go over something you don't want to dig again, simply hit the alum button. Now it's quiet. There are four minor frequency adjustments that you can use in order to minimize interference caused by electrical sources or by other metal detectors. 
To switch frequencies, hold down the alim button and change the setting with the discrim plus or minus buttons. There are also eight levels of sensitivity. Increase sensitivity when you're searching for a very small item or a very deep item. Other times you might want to decrease sensitivity is when the machine is behaving erratically due to excessive metallic trash or highly mineralized grounds. One important thing about your metal detector is knowing how to pinpoint properly. Of course, the ACE comes with electronic pinpointing, but let's go through a few different options of how you can do this. Pinpointing helps you dig a target quicker, lets you dig a smaller hole, and get on about your business of finding your next target that much faster. So to demonstrate, I've got a silver coin. I've got a hole here a couple inches deep. I'm gonna put it in the ground, cover it back over and bury it, level that out. And then for demonstration purposes, I have this little blue plastic chip. I'm gonna put that right dead center over where we buried the coin. That way you can kind of visually see what's going on as we pinpoint. Now the first one we're gonna go through is just the basic electronic pinpointing with your pinpoint button. So let's use the pinpoint button and go through this first step. Okay, your standard pinpointing method. When you find a, a target out in the field, this sounds good. What I wanna do is come to the side of it before I start to pinpoint because I don't want to be over the target and tune it out. So get to the side of where you suspect it is, hold down your pinpoint button, you'll see the PP appear on the screen indicating pinpoint mode, and let's go back over it until I get the strongest signal across the top, those bars at their strongest level. And then we can push forward and backward, kind of X marks the spot until I've got the strongest north, south, east, west signal, full bars there. I know I can dig right there in the center of that coil. That's where the pinpointed area of my target's going to be. Now some people like a uh, different style of pinpointing. They like to pinpoint off either the tip or the tail of the coil. So we're gonna go through both of those methods next. And the first is going right off the very tip end of this double D coil, and the other is off the very tail of it. So let's go in here close and take a look at this. The good thing about this double D coil is it offers you some other ways to pinpoint like the tip and tail. So let's come in and find our target again. Same thing, get to the side before you hit pinpoint so you don't tune it out. Go to pinpoint and then find your strongest signal. Once I've got the strongest possible signal, I can just pull back until the meter dives off and the audio dives off. And I know my target's gonna be right off the tip end of that coil. If it's really deep, it might be just inside, but if it's fairly shallow, it's gonna be at the very end or just off the end of the coil, meaning I can dig a very tight hole there and not waste a bunch of time going for the target or tear up a field. I can also go off the tail. So same thing, find a target, step to the side, hit my pinpoint button, get my strongest signal, and then push forward. Once that meter dives off and the audio dives off, I know that my target's gonna be right off the tip end of that coil back there. One final pinpointing method with this double D coil. You can do this without even using the pinpoint button. It's what some people call the wiggle or the DD wiggle method. Let's take a look at that real quick. Some people that use DD coils don't even like to use the electronic pinpoint button. They simply just wiggle the coil back and forth to find their target. And you can do so because of the overlapping DD configuration. So when I hit a target like this, Instead of going to pinpoint, I can just start wiggling real tight and approaching the target area where I think it is until I've just got a consistent banging of the target. I can even move forward until it falls off, pull back, it's off the tip or the tail, but I'm just moving it back and forth very tight and I'm just wiggling it and I've pinpointed my target the same way without using the pinpoint button. One thing you can do to understand your ACE 400i better is to do some bench testing. Basically, you wanna get it where it's nice and stable, get the coil where it's calm, it's not in motion, and it's away from any metal. So in this case, I've just got this wooden bench and I've got a variety of targets I'm gonna test. And what you can do is test them, swing them in front of the coil and record what they sound like, what their target IDs are, so you get an idea of what you might encounter in the field. I'll start with a couple of uh, junk targets. Here's an iron nail and you wanna move it about 
two to three inches or you know five to ten centimeters in front of the coil keep it nice and level it's jumping between 1 and 12 and I'm getting the low tone if I change the direction of this iron still getting a low tone but notice the different readings you get iron acts differently depending on which direction you approach it so you can learn a little bit from your air test uh, here's a piece of foil chewing gum wrapper kind of middle of the road in the 50s there here's a torn up piece of a pop top higher number so that just goes to show you trash targets can hit all over the place here's a little gold ring kind of a mid-tone in the 50s uh, here's an old Roman coin bronze higher number higher tone uh, another little washer or flat piece junk iron definitely has a low number in the sound of iron here's a bottle cap though you find a lot of these out in the field and they often sound like a good target I scan across there I've got a high tone and a clean sound now the iron audio can come into play on checking targets like this that have some iron content in them what I have to do though is put it into a mode or go into some notching where I've taken out some of the iron. Iron must be eliminated for iron audio to work. Scan it again and it still sounds good, but if I put on my iron audio feature, now I'm getting some of those grunt sounds, that iron flanking sound. That tells me it's not a good target. Now if I was to hit my Roman coin again while I'm still in iron audio, that's still got a nice clean sound. So you can definitely learn from bench testing. These same targets, once you have a test plot outside where you've dug out all the metal and you have some clean dirt, bury some of those targets, scan them again at different depths and at different angles and see what kind of target readings you get and see how they can change sometimes. So a lot to be learned from bench testing and from having a test plot. Just a couple things that will also help you understand your ACE 400i even better. Here's a few search tips to use with your ACE detector. First, keep the coil close to the soil at all times and swing it very level for the best results. Walk slowly in a straight line, swinging the search coil side to side at a rate of about two to five feet per second. Overlap the coil by half its length over each search area. The DD search coil allows easy separation of adjacent targets. Use narrow swings to isolate good targets from nearby trash. When your battery level indicator shows one bar remaining, it's time to change batteries. Nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries can be used, but they may have shorter life per charge than standard alkaline batteries. 1.5 volt lithium batteries can also be used, but 3.7 volt lithium batteries will damage the detector and should not be used. Access the batteries by sliding the cover off the control housing. Remove the batteries when the detector will be stored more than 30 days. Avoid extreme temperatures such as storing detectors in car trunks during the summer or in sub-freezing weather. Periodically disassemble your detector and clean the stems, control housing, and search coil with a damp cloth. This environmental cover-up helps protect your control housing electronics from dust, mud, and rain. Protect your search coil from scratches and chips by installing a Garrett coil cover. Expand your search options with one of these ACE series accessory search coils. This small super sniper coil and this 5x8 double D coil are ideal for searching in tight areas and in separating numerous adjacent targets in trashier hunt sites. Larger concentric search coils provide the greatest detection depth and the largest possible detection fields. The Garrett Pro Pointer is highly recommended for all detectorists to speed their recovery of detected targets, to dig smaller recovery holes, and to identify multiple targets in close proximity. The ProPointer AT can even be used underwater to a maximum 10-foot depth. To learn more about your new ACE detector and to see the latest Garrett accessories, be sure to visit garrett.com.